Good afternoon, good people of Lagos. Good afternoon, good people of Ikorodu. And of course, good afternoon to everyone out there all over the world listening to IKD 106.1 FM, your number one radio station. You check your time, you say it's exactly 20 minutes past the hour of 12. A very beautiful way, a very good way, I must say, to welcome you to the issues on IKD 106.1 FM. My name is Ade Bambo Opayemi, and of course, I'm going to be your host for today on the show where I have a a very beautiful guest doing justice to the conversation this afternoon. Yes, uh, the word malaria, the disease malaria cannot be overemphasized. And just like you know how we do it every Thursday here in our studio, we give you healthy conversations where we partner and work alongside Ikorodu General Hospital. And today will not be an exception where we have Dr. Yetunde Odusolu, who happens to be a consultant, public health physician from Ikorodu General Hospital. You would recall that on Monday, precisely, the World Health Organization set the day aside, 25th of April, precisely, every year, as the World Malaria Day. And today, the conversation still continues because, of course, yes, on Monday, the conversation did not end. And when we look at malaria, this deadly disease, it is something that so many people, so many persons have taken for granted. But then, it is as deadly as every other disease out there. And that is why we have dedicated today, being the 28th of April, 2022, to continue and, of course, end the conversation that has to do with the World Malaria Day. The theme for the year is harness innovation to reduce the malaria disease burden and save life. But for today on the show, with me, Dr. Yetunde, we will do justice to the conversation, advance equity, build resilience, and malaria. I take that one more time, advance equity build resilience, and end malaria. A very beautiful way to say good afternoon to you, Dr. Oye, today. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you here once again. Yeah. And I must say it again, you're looking so good. Thank you. <laughs> that is the voice of uh, Dr. Oye, today, our guest from Ikorodu General Hospital, who will be doing justice to the conversation, advance equity, build resilience, and end malaria. Okay. But I will start off from this part of the conversation. For the benefit of those that uh, are not yet aware, Doctor, when we talk about malaria, how deadly is this disease? Uh, malaria is a disease of public health importance and is very deadly. Mm. Because uh, according to the World Health Organization, yes. recently we have about 300 million cases of malaria worldwide. Mm. And we have about 670,000 deaths, even in 2020. Mm. You know? So, and even in Nigeria, yeah, now it's said that every minute, by the time we have finished this program, now maybe 24, I mean, every minute a child has died, you know. Every minute. Yes, a child dies of malaria. Mm -hmm. Yes. And malaria accounts for about, you know, a, a, when we talk about mobility, disease burden, then mortality, death. Yes. So it accounts for about 60% of outpatient visits in the hospital. When people go to the hospital to maybe for one ailment or the other, we found out that it is because of malaria that they go for 50%, 6 out of 10 people. Then maybe for children, we say that maybe for children under 5, it accounts for 30%, you know, of their, you know, of their, mob of their mobility of disease that children will have. Then also for pregnant women, it causes about 11% of their deaths. So it is severe. When we pregnant women die from malaria, even children too, even under five children, it accounts for 25% of their deaths too. So malaria is a very deadly disease that is even more deadly than even when we talk about HIV, <laughs> uh, TB, other diseases co combined together. Mm -hmm. uh, Doctor, you today some yeah. persons will say that when it has to do with malaria, mm -hmm. some have seen it as a normal disease, that it's a normal thing, it will come and it will go. But with your conversation, you're making it known that malaria is even more deadly than some diseases that we feel are even more higher. Mm -hmm. So this brings me to the conversation. When we talk about malaria, there are types of malaria. What are the types of malaria that we can actually list out? Well, when you're talking about types of malaria, we can have uh, the simple, uncomplicated malaria. Then you can have the severe malaria. Uh, these are the two major distinctions that you have malaria divided into two. The acute one that is simple, uncomplicated. Then we have the complicated ones. So that the two major types of malaria that a person can have. All right. Uh, okay. Be before we look at the causes of malaria, because there are, there are causes to this, mm. before then, then we jump into the proper conversation, the advanced equity build resilience and end malaria yeah. because what we're preaching today is how we can end this disease yeah. called malaria before we dive into that conversation i should let our listeners know today of course that you would have the opportunity uh, to get medical advice from dr yitunde who happens to be a consultant 
and public health physician from Ikorodu General Hospital. That means your calls can come in onto the program on 0904-081-1061. 0904-081-1061, where you can ask whatever question you have to ask on malaria, because this has become a very terrible disease, but yet so many persons are not aware. So I ask you, uh, Dr. Yetunde, what causes malaria exactly? Some believe that when you talk about malaria, it is just when mosquito bites me, that's all I will have malaria or I'm infected with malaria. What are the causes of malaria? Well, malaria is a, is a disease that is caused by what we call a, a plasmodium. It's a, it's a protozoan, a type of parasite, mm -hmm. you know. But there is a vector that carries that plasmodium. Yeah, and that vector is the mosquito that we commonly know. And the ones that usually cause malaria is known as the female anopheles mosquito, that ones that cause malaria. So, and we have different types of uh, the plasmodium that can cause malaria. We have the falciparum, which is one, the one that usually uh, responsible maybe for the severe malaria cases. We have the plasmodium ovale, the plasmodium malaria the plasmodium virus, and there is a one that is said to not be common in human beings. Maybe you find it in maybe in monkeys and other primates, the plasmodium nolesi. But it's the mosquito that is the vector that carries that plasmodium. When it bites man, it introduces that plasmodium into the body. And when the process of uh, maybe incubating, incubating, the disease develops in the body, and the person starts uh, manifesting the malaria symptoms like headache, fever, body aches, abdominal pain, as the case may be. All right. Uh, okay. So mm. we, we, we need to be very sure about uh, when we talk about malaria now, we need to be sure at the side of how this can be treated because so many people are used to it already. And some persons who just have a way of treating it in a shallow way and they think it is all gone, but it's still there. It's still there hiding in a way. We look at how to treat this malaria before how we can even prevent it. Now, when talking about treating malaria, what are the best measures to treat malaria? Some people don't even believe in tests. They just tell you it is a Some will even say it's a family sickness. So what are the best measures in treating malaria? Well, the best measures in treating malaria is first to get your first tested. Tested that you have malaria. Because according to the WHO, there's, there's even not even WHO, even, it's not whole fever that is malaria. So you need to test to see that, okay, I have this malaria. And there are two types of tests. We have the rapid test get that kit that they used to know whether a person has, is positive to the malaria parasite. There's also where we have the malaria, uh, this uh, microscopy test, which is the gold standard test for malaria. So if you do those, either of the two, but the rapid test is the one that can be done maybe by anybody that is just trained. The microscopy has to be done by trained labs, laboratory scientists, and we don't have them in large number. So that is why we usually do the rapid test. So if you do the rapid test and it's positive, then the person is now treated. And the drug for treatment is what we call the artemisinin combination therapy. We call it ACT. And that is the one that has advocated, you know, and there is a guideline on how to use those drugs. So you just don't just go and go to the pharmacy or just, ah, I have malaria, you know, I have fever. So, uh, yeah, let me take out malaria. Because you are just taking all those drugs irrationally like that, we can build resistance to the parasites. Mm. And it creates like greater problems. Okay, let's take this first call from this uh, first caller. Hello to you. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please, I need you to reduce the volume of your radio sets, please. Okay. Yes, what's your name and where are you calling us from? My name is Olamide and I'm calling from Nikoroju. Okay, Olamide, today we're talking about malaria and how to prevent it. Do you have any questions on that? Yes. All right, speak to the doctor. Okay. Hello, allow me to go ahead, please. Okay, um, I have a, my younger brother is having issues. He has been purging and vomiting, so I want to know can he cause malaria? Okay, if I get your questions correctly, allow me to, you said you have a younger brother who has been purging, and could that be the cause of malaria? Yes. All right, get your answer real quick from Dr. Yu today. No, that cannot be. Malaria does not usually cause purging. So maybe you have to look, maybe to go and see the doctors, maybe they will test him and they ask him to give him some medications to take. So mal malaria does not usually cause a uh, purging stool. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you very much, Olamide. I hope you're satisfied with that. Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so very much. 
1061. Just like I told you earlier during the course of the conversation, who will take in more calls? Hello to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Your name, please. Well, my name is Larry. I'm calling you from the All right. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Larry. I agree with yeah, she is responding. Okay. Yeah, um, I have a question for you, sir. Okay. I, do, I know answer to this question, but I don't want to ask. Okay. Um, what's the relationship uh, between a genotype of a person and malaria? For instance, I know that um, a blood group, a person with a blood group of them, um, if the person forms the malaria from a small bite or a blood form, that's the question I have. Well, I will not say that if somebody that has you know, the genotype, hey, hey, when the person is beaten by uh, the mosquito, the person will have malaria. It depends on maybe on the immunity of the person. Actually, and there are some genetic factors that, uh, that makes somebody that is a hey, hey, to be more prone to malaria than somebody that has a hey, hey, That maybe, but more research has been done in that area in your body. That we said that some people have a hey, have protective factors against uh, malaria. Parasite than people that have genotype AE. Uh, I am AE and my commonest sickness is malaria. Uh, but any which way, we move straight ahead on the issues today. If you're just joining us, uh, you've missed out a little bit. I won't lie to you on that. Uh, but we still have Dr. Yetende in the studio where we'll do justice to the conversation. Advanced equity, build resilience, and malaria. This is what we preach. This is what the World Health Organization, WHO, preaches. And that is why they set aside every 25th of April as the World Malaria Day. Today, we are going to end the conversation, and I come back to you, Dr. Yutune. How do we end malaria? How do we resist malaria? Because that is the major question for today. Yes, we can end malaria. You know, you talked about malaria. The program is about malaria elimination. We want to eliminate malaria. Exactly. Then before we get maybe total eradication. But we want to eliminate malaria. But even by 2030, malaria will be eliminated from where all the countries that are prone to uh, high body countries where they usually have malaria. And so in adding the malaria, that is why the theme for this World Health Day was about harnessing innovation to end the burden of malaria, to save lives. And we're talking about innovations like the use of the long-lasting insecticide treated nets, which we call the uh, uh, the nets that people can sleep, sleep under to prevent them from mosquito bites. We talk about the use of innovations such as vaccine in children. Uh, under five children, we talk about innovations such as indoor residual spraying, spraying of the walls, you know, to prevent the uh, elim to eliminate mosquitoes mm. even in the house. We talk about innovations such as the use of a. Uh, the ACT. Then also, there are some tests that are being done, like maybe in children, you call it urine malaria test, you know, to test for the malaria parasite. So, so such innovations are the ones that we are talking about, you know, in anesthesia, so that we can, you know, end malaria. Then you know, innovation so that environmental control too, you know, okay. genetic engineering and all those things to control, you know, the mosquito breeding sites, you know, so that we can reduce the uh, the, the vector density, you know. They talk about innovation such as live siding, you know, which is not common. It may not be common in high body, in some high body areas, they may not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But in some areas where we just have uh, maybe low transmission area where we have pockets of water, yeah. they can do live siding with chemicals to kill the uh, the breeding sites of the mosquitoes. Mm, okay, uh, part of the innovations you mentioned, I would like us to focus on them mm. one after the other mm. because it's actually very important and it's key so that we could know this. So many people are aware of malaria, but how to fight it is what some do not know. Mm. You talked about the long-lasting net. Can we just talk about this for just a few minutes? When you say long-lasting net, does that have to do with this mosquito net in the house, or is there any other long-lasting net? Yes, it's called long-lasting insecticide-treated net. You call it ITN for short. Insecticide-treated net for short. Insecticide-treated net. And it's because these nets, they are being impregnated with chemicals okay. that can kill the mosquito. It has been found that there is a chemical they call it pyrethroid that they used to impregnate the mosquitoes. Some of the mosquitoes in our environment are developing resistant to it. So they've had another chemical to it. So now we have a dual chemical inside the net, you know. And when the, and when the mosquito perches on the net, you know, they die. So they are, they, they, the nets are supposed to be spread, you know. People sleep under it. Even if they have said that, even if you just put in the nets in the house, it will reduce some of the... 
mosquitoes even in the environment because when they come some people can even use it for nettings of their windows or their doors you know not for fishing nets because some people when they give them the nets they will go and use it for fishing but this one net is supposed to be slept under and it's supposed to reduce the malaria burden mm. okay mm. you also talked about the use of vaccine when you say vaccine so many persons are aware of vaccine just because of covid-19 mm. so covid-19 brought the consciousness of vaccine to the minds of persons so when you say use of vaccine is there vaccine for malaria or just for children yes the vaccine is for uh, reducing malaria burden in children and it has been found even from the pilot study that has been done in some countries like Malawi, Ghana, Kenya. It has found that it has reduced the burden of malaria by 40% in those children, even if it has reduced hospitalization. So the vaccine is called it is out muscuris, maybe for short. Mm -hmm. So and it is supposed to be given for children to maybe to the age of 20, 22 months. According to the WHO, uh, maybe for five maybe five doses, mm. you know, and they are supposed to be part of their routine immunization schedule. So that's where they're supposed to uh, take the vaccine, the, most, the malaria vaccine. So it has found that even in Kenya, when they, they adopt the four doses, and they found that that has reduced the malaria burden in children. So I believe that maybe very soon they will extend it to Nigeria because Nigeria is also one of the uh, high burden areas for, mal for malaria. Uh, Nigeria is, is the giant of Africa, so yeah. we expect that <laughs> we expect yeah. that to be extended straight down to Nigeria. Okay. Before we talk about another innovation that you talked about, that is ACT. I would like us to quickly attend to this question. Somebody is asking that: Is it normal to treat malaria every month? It is not normal to treat malaria every month. But, uh, and and uh, what, what I'm trying to say is that some people just say I have malaria, I have fever. It is not all fever that is malaria. Mm. So you must first get yourself tested. If you are tested and you are positive, that's when you are allowed to take the drug for treatment. Mm. Not that you just say I have malaria or I start taking drugs. It's not because by then you are doing that every month. You are building resistance you know, of the anti-malaria drugs. So they will not even work when the person now have the real malaria. Because the system is used to the drugs. Already. Yes, so you yes. Just using and yes. Using and nothing changes. Oh, okay, that's, that's, that's brilliant. But then, can malaria cause death? Ah, uh, it causes death. I've told you before. I said it's responsible for about 11% of deaths mm -hmm. of all causes of mortality in pregnant women. It's responsible for about 30% of death in under five children. And children that and children uh, okay is responsible for thirty percent of hospital visits for you know then twenty five percent of death maybe one out of every four children that comes to the hospital or under five malaria causes death in them so malaria is a is a disease that needs to be tackled with that's why we say that every effort count everybody all hands need to be on deck to combat malaria all right uh, yes. all hands needs to be on deck that is the voice of our doctor yesterday giving a very, very sincere advice, a medical healthy advice that you have to ensure that we all together, not just one of us, not just two, but all of us combine to ensure that we stop the spread of this disease called malaria. So talking about the innovations, we go back to that conversation. One of the measures we mentioned is ACT. When you say ACT, what exactly does that mean? I have said it before. I said it means a terminating combination therapy. There are drugs that have been found and tested and proven to be used for treatment of malaria. People used to, in the days, in the eight days, long has been the eight days where people used to use chloroquine for treating malaria. It has been banned, you know, so it's no longer be used used again. Mm -hmm. So we are using the ACT as a combination drug, and the combination can come in different types. It can come in atemetalumifantrin, atemeta, atesinate, amodiaquine. SP that there is a combination drug that have been found to be treated for. So the, before you even use those drugs, it must have been tested. Mm -hmm. I'm to emphasizing it. it must have been tested that you have malaria before you use the drugs. Another innovation you talked about mm. is that of environment. But yeah. before environment, you mentioned test. Mm. Now that test will bring me back to a question I asked earlier. Some people still believe that, for instance, if I have malaria in the month of January. And in the month of March, I'm still feeling the same symptoms that I felt the last time. What is the essence of running a test again when I know that this could be the same sickness I was passing through in January? So when you say test, is it still necessary or is it very important 
to always go through that process every time. Yes, it's good to go through that process every time. You know, during the advent of COVID, you know when people had COVID, so many people were having fever, yeah. backache, and all those things. So you, you know, even the when they say, ah, you have malaria symptoms, just yeah. go to the hospital, maybe COVID. So many people had COVID that were looking like malaria. So you need to be tested. Mm. So don't say that ah, because I had fever like before, I had body aches. There's so many diseases that can mimic that kind of symptoms. So you need to be tested before taking anti-malaria. You need to be tested before taking anti-malaria. You have heard that too. You have heard that from Dr. Yetinde. Don't always assume. Assumption kills and it destroys. So let's look at some symptoms of malaria. You mentioned very few the other time. I would like us to mention them again so as to differentiate. Just like the time of COVID, like you said, those that even had malaria were thinking it's COVID. And those that had COVID will just say it's nothing. It's just that normal malaria. What are the symptoms of malaria specifically? Uh, the major symptom of malaria is person has fever. Uh, the fever may be uh, fluctuating, you know, uh, maybe they have, in, 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 during the day, the person may feel okay in the, in the evening, the fever will just spike up then like that. The person may have headache, the person may have uh, abdominal pain, you know, body aches, you know, they have chills and rigor, the feeling of malaise, weakness, tiredness, you know, those are the major symptoms of malaria. But if the malaria is complicated, as in maybe it's now becoming severe, then they may have other symptoms. They may have acute confusional state. They may be confused. Mm. And maybe, you know, there may be malaria, there's one complication of malaria they call severe malaria, cerebral malaria. Mm. But malaria that affects the brain. So the person may be confused. Sometimes they may lapse into unconsciousness. Wow. You know, malaria affects the kidney. The person may be passing dark colored Coca Cola like urine. Oh, okay. you know. let's, let, let's take this call <laughs> first. I think I'm enjoying that. Hello. Mm. Hello to you. Hello. Good afternoon. Okay, if you can hear me, I cannot hear you. You should call back on 0904-081-1061. 0904-081-1061. I told you, we'll take in all your calls on 0904-081-1061. At the same time, do not forget that we're very much available on Radio Garden and, of course, on our website, www.ikd1061fm.ng. Hello to you. Good afternoon. I can hear you loud and clear. Good afternoon. Uh -huh. All right. Good afternoon, ma. I'm a, I'm a I'm oh, okay. Uh, we have Doctor Yu today in the studio. Uh -huh. Sorry for calling because I was busy and I just had to It's very okay. It's very okay. Now, um, Doctor Yu, my question is: looking at this kind of people, I hear you say now that. Um, Thank you very much. Like I said earlier, I said the mosquito nets are impregnated with chemicals. There is a chemical they call it pyrethroid, and I've been found that some of the mosquito, uh, the vector, the mosquito, they are developing resistance to that pyrethroid. Uh, that is being used to impregnate the mosquito net. Mm. It may possibly be that that is the type of mosquito net that you have. That's why the mosquitoes are just pushing on it and they are enjoying themselves. They are not dying. Mm. But now WHO has there's another chemical they call it PBO that you know you now added to it. So you have dual perma dual effect. Mm. So that one will, when that dual effect is supposed to kill the mosquito. So maybe the perhaps the mosquito you had is the one that has the paratoid. Maybe that's why. The mosquitoes are having the field day in your house. All right. Uh, yes. Hello to you. Good afternoon. Yes. Your name and where you're calling us from? Mrs. Fumi or Mrs. Ibukumi? Mrs. Fumi. Okay. Miss, uh, yes, Mrs. Fumi, where are you calling us from, please? All right. Your question or contribution? I want to 
Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. That's a lovely one. I feel I feel loved. She's actually greeting us, uh, myself and Dr. E today. So uh, you were saying something earlier about uh, this mosquito net that has either the dual or the single. So to that caller, wherever you might be, you heard that, or perhaps ensure that you get the original one. That is also very important. And yeah. make inquiries. Find out and ask questions in some cases. So I would ask now, Dr. Yitule, how then, as uh, the general hospital, you could do, uh, put out measures, aside the one we're currently doing, to ensure that the general public are aware of this deadly disease called malaria? Well, yeah, recently to celebrate the World Malaria Day, at General Hospital Ikorodu, we had a road walk, a sensitization a, a, a program for the populace. So we went on the road walk, you know, we, we hand out leaflets and bills talking about we major ways of preventing malaria. Then we also, on the flyer too, we also had we free testing for people that had feverish symptoms then to come for free testing then free treatment for any malaria positive clients then we also distributed these insecticide treated nets for basically maybe the under five children and the pregnant women in the and the, the turnout was massive and impressive okay yeah uh, that's 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 a very lovely one and a very big uh, well done big big well done to Ikorudu general mm -hmm. hospital mm -hmm. so when it has to do with malaria your word of advice to persons that are out there that believe that Malaria, let me say this in our indigenous language. Some will say that malaria for a no man law. That is to say that it came itself and it will live by itself. Mm -hmm. And to some people, in a way, it's like it's working for them. They just have that feel. They do not treat it. They do not use drugs, no medications, no thirst. And it leaves. What do you have to say to people like this who have refused to go through the medical procedure of treating malaria? Well, if they refuse to go through the medical procedure of treating malaria, then they should not use the treatments. Because the, for them to use the treatment, they must ensure that they are tested first. And there are some people that they have acquired immunity to that malaria. So, so to say, because of the I, because we are in a high body area, some people have immunity because of they have repeated infection. Mm. So they have developed immunity to the malaria. Mm. So those ones, you, they cannot maybe they don't have the symptoms again. So they don't need to take any treatment. You know, mm. but for people that are having the symptoms and signs, maybe fever that we have mentioned about body aches, they should get themselves tested before being taking the anti malaria drugs, the ACT. All right, before we leave, before we leave, because our time is fast spent already. Now, you talked about environment, hmm. part of the innovations yes. in tackling this deadly disease. There are some persons that find themselves in some environment that, whether they like it or yes, that is where circumstance plays them. Mm. Now, in this kind of case, Malaria is rampant, is most common in that environment. What should persons like this do? I mean, an environment, there is no way I would say I want to run from the malaria because it's all over. What should people like this do in that situation? Well, there are so many things they can do. First, yeah, before, they... before we attend to that, let's just take this call. Hello, okay. this will be our last call for today. Hello. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. How are you today, Maria? All right, thank you very much, Miriam, for beating us. Thank you so very much. Yeah, bye bye, Miriam. Have a lovely day. Wow, that's wonderful. Miriam is also greeting us. So, for people around this environment, Dr. Yetende, what should they do? Uh, first, there are many things they can do. Okay. First, they, will, they can make sure that they ensure that they sleep under the ICNs, wherever they are. When they are outdoors, they may they wear long sleeves. To protect themselves from mosquito bites, mm -hmm. some can use the mosquito repellent cream. You know, rub it on their hands, on their body. They can also ensure that there are no stagnant or pockets of water around them. You know, maybe broken tires, cups, uh, bottles. You know, that will accumulate water for mosquitoes to breed. So, if they do all this, then they will not be. Able, they will not. The probability of getting malaria is reduced. And there are some people that they are in some maybe people that. Uh, I would like put it now in some areas, let me like prisoners, refugees and all those things. You know, there are some that we need to give them chemoprophylaxis. Just like we give chemoprophylaxis for pregnant women who are pregnant, we give them 
uh, what we call a uh, sulfadosine premetamine. What exactly does that do? It helps to prevent uh, a malaria in pregnancy, so okay. that we, we to, to help to protect the woman even from having pregnancy induced anemia because they can have anemia. Then uh, their children too. It prevents them from having low birth weight, from uh, uh, from death. Mm. You know, from parasitemia, past congenital malaria that children may have. The infants that are giving birth to me have. So it has been found. They are proving those are proven technologies too. That when you give a uh, woman IPT in pregnancy, it helps to reduce the malaria burden both in the pregnant women and in the babies the and giving time, them good health outcomes. All right. Uh, okay. The next time you'll be hearing from the Purdue General Hospital will be <laughs> next week, Thursday, where we're coming with another very brilliant, healthy conversation. But before you leave, Dr. Yetunde, your personal word of advice, your medical advice to persons out there still in focus of advanced equity, build resilience, and end malaria. Yeah, you know, as everyone all has to be on deck every to prevent malaria. Every effort counts. Everyone has something to do to prevent malaria. Make your environment is clean, free from grasses, free from uh, accumulation of water. Make sure you get tested before treatment. You know, get make sure you sleep under the ITNs, insecticide treated nets. You know, and of course, make sure you are responsible citizens. You know. Provide leadership for others. Mm. Yes. All right, that is the piece of advice you're going to be getting. Mm. All you have gotten already from Dr. Yetunde Udu Solu, who had done justice to the conversation Advanced Equity, Build Resilience, and End Malaria. I want to say thank you very much, Dr. Yetunde. Yes. Uh, it's an honor having you here, and we hope to see you some other time. Okay. She happens to be a consultant and public health physician from Ikorodu General Hospital. My name still remains the same, and this is a very beautiful way to sign out from the studio today. Adebambo Okoye means the name. Let's do it again tomorrow on the issues where we come with another very beautiful uh, conversation. God bless Nigeria. God bless World Health Organization, who has decided that 25th of April every year should be set aside for World Malaria Day. Coming up next is the World News at IKD 106.1 FM. Good afternoon, Nigeria. Good afternoon, Lagos. And of course, good afternoon to the good people of the Kundu. It's a half an hour. Thank you.